how customization uses 3D printed metal and 3D printed polymer working together. 3D printing on the putting green in this episode of The Cool Part Show. This episode of The Cool Part Show is brought to you by Carpenter Additive. The company's Powder Life solution is a combination of hardware and software technologies designed to help AM users manage their metal powders. Stay tuned after the episode for more on how this system works. I'm Pete. I'm Stephanie. Welcome to The Cool Parts Show. This is our show all about cool, unique, interesting 3D printed parts, and today we're talking about this putter. We're talking about a 3D printed putter, 3D printing for golf. And this club has a lot of things going on for it. We're going to talk about both metal and polymer 3D printing. We're going to talk about mass customization. And I think this is probably our furthest traveled cool part to date. This putter was developed at Nelson Mandela University in South Africa by an engineering student and his professor. They are viewers of the show, fans of the show. They, they catch it regularly and they reached out to us to tell us about the, the work they're doing in 3D printing to create this putter and we got interested. Yeah, so student engineer that we're talking about, his name is Vian von Asvegen, um, and he is a very accomplished golfer. He started playing golf as a kid. By the time he was eight years old, he was playing in his provincial team, which is sort of like state level here in the US. At one point, he was ranked in the top 10 golfers in his region, so um, a very, very elite golfer, and he got to know a lot of other elite golfers. And something that he noticed was that when you get to play golf at a certain level, you start to want different things out of your equipment. You start to, to want want more specific uh, things in terms of loft angle and balance and the way that the club feels. And there just aren't that many good options for, for getting a customized club that's made just for you. You and I, uh, we don't know golf. We know, we understand additive manufacturing a lot better than golf, but Vian understands both. Yeah, so Vian has all of this experience with golf. He's also studying engineering and at Nelson Mandela University. Um, he's involved in something called the Advanced Engineering Design Group, which is where he sort of um, had access to additive manufacturing technology and where this idea kind of took shape. So let's meet him. It basically just came about by, by just chatting about my background. When I, when I joined the um, Advanced Engineer, Engineering and Design Group here at Nelson Mandela University, and then basically just we snowballed the idea of why don't we just create our own golf putter or golf club actually looking at the different ideas of like how we can do this and what is available to us. Uh, we came up with the idea of additive manufacturing uh, to, to try and incorporate that. And also, if you, if you think about the manufacturers nowadays, they mainly cater for the masses. So basically what they do is they create the same design over and over and over thousands, maybe even millions of times. The high level golfers don't really get that putter that is designing specifically for them to optimize their performance. He's part of this special group, like you say, he had help. So here is his advisor, who is a lecturer with that special program you mentioned, the AE Design Group. I run the, uh, a group called the Advanced Engineering Design Group, where we have students uh, that are passionate about design and uh, specifically new technologies. They come here with ideas, or we send ideas out to our general uh, student population. So it's very much not part of their curricula. Um, and it, it, what it does is, is it enables us to expose them to things like uh, design for additive manufacturing, com composites, uh, skills, design methodologies, which they wouldn't necessarily meet or be exposed to as part of your standard engineering curriculum. My, my thing is very much to let them have free reign, is to not, not constrain ideas, but rather to really have the guys broaden their horizons and, and throw uh, get some creative abilities in there which can sometimes be stymied in a standard engineering environment which is typically subtractive for example. So this is the context where this putter was developed. This advanced engineering design group, it's sort of this special group at the, at the university. It's not something that students are necessarily getting credit for participating in, but it is this place where they can come with their ideas, they can play around, they can experiment. Yeah, but, but it wasn't just a playful idea. This is a real solution to a real problem with real commercial potential. Vian saw that golfers at a certain level routinely wanted to take their game farther by getting just the right equipment, equipment tailored to their particular swing. And what he was learning about advanced manufacturing technology showed him that he could see a 
way to do that tailoring better and faster. Yeah, because if you think about those conventional clubs that you buy off the shelf, um, the head is probably going to start as a casting or a forging. So that means there's, there's tooling involved. There's lead time before you even get to that piece of metal. And then once you have it, there's going to be machining, there's going to be finishing, there might be like painting and other aesthetic touches uh, before it gets assembled with the handle and becomes a, a golf club. Okay, so there's a lot going on here in terms of the, the potential geometric variation from club to club. We can't see it in just like one one specimen of the club, but any given individual golfer who wants a putter attuned to their swing, they basically want a putter that's attuned to like essentially the way their body works when they're playing golf. And uh, that leads to all kinds of different possibilities in terms of the geometric variation that might be needed. With different putters, uh, there are quite a lot of um, specifications that the person could come to us. Uh, those are namely stuff like your loft, your lie angle, your balance, your mass that you would require, uh, your groove pattern, all of this makes a difference, uh, not just in performance, but also um, aesthetically. Um, and yeah, in terms of, of balances, it refers to the, the weight distribution of, of the putter. So there are three different, three main different types of balances. The first balance is um, face balance. So if you hold the putter like this, the putter face would be pointing directly upwards. Um, and then the second balance would be, if you hold it like this, then the putter would hang at roughly a 30 degree angle. That is called quarter balance. And then the third one is the putter is hanging completely down and that is called toe balance. So this would roughly be like 70 degrees or so on. Um, so yeah, those are the different balances. And the balance refers to the golfer's stroke arc. So to try and go straight back, straight through through the golf ball is kind of difficult sometimes for some people. Um, so the balance is trying to like counteract that movement that you would have in your stroke to try and get it as consistent as possible. Vian is describing all the different ways the geometry could vary and and it gets right to what you were saying about casting, that you wouldn't want to have, you couldn't have all of the tooling that would be needed to handle all those different variations, different molds or different patterns. Like it would just be impossible to tailor a club that way. But 3D printing provides a way that makes it natural to tailor the club from individual to individual and make every club different. And, and, and this is an interesting part, even for the Cool Parts Show, because we have done um, 3D printed metal cool parts. We have done 3D printed polymer cool parts. This is metal and polymer working together. Yeah, so let's get to the 3D printing. Um, you want to talk about the metal part first? How was that made? Okay, the 3D printed component of this, the, the club head and the hosel, um, this was made through laser powder bed fusion on an M290 machine from EOS. It was made by Rapid 3D, which is an additive manufacturing service provider in South Africa. Um, material is 314 stainless steel. Um, printing this took about 24 hours and it was just about complete at that point because uh, the process was engineered and the part was designed in part to minimize the need for post-processing. Yeah, and that's sort of interesting for, for metal 3D printing. A lot of times we see a lot of machining happening after printing, um, but they designed this part to have no overhangs, uh, and there really wasn't very much that needed to happen other than cutting the part off the build plate at the end. Okay, so, so that gets us to the polymer components. Like, let's look at those. Uh, the polymer components are for weight control. In the case of this product, mass customization includes customization of the mass. Uh, these components, um, what's hidden inside them is varying lattice structures. Uh, so these polymer weights achieve exactly the mass that's needed for this individual's club along with the proper distribution of that mass. So these polymer components were made with a different process. This is fused filament fabrication, FFF, ex extrusion style 3D printing. They were 3D printed on a machine from Mark Forged at the Advanced Engineering Design Group, and they're made out of onyx, which is a carbon fiber reinforced nylon material. Uh, and so these parts are weights. As you said, they're there to, to distribute the weight across the club. But what I think is really interesting about them is that the way they're attached is just these two screws on the bottom here. And so um, you can imagine a scenario where you might use this putter for a while and decide, 
uh, something about it isn't quite working or there's something about my swing that's changing and I want to get new weights and you could you could very easily have new weights printed and just swap them out. So this putter is um, very adaptable, very customizable at the outset, but it can also change and adapt with you as your, your gameplay changes. Your more serious golfer out there, uh, they tend to be forced to buy things off the shelf, uh, which tend to be very standardized, uh, some very nice putters, uh, but they tend to be standardized. They, they're not, uh, they don't have their own signature in, in, uh, in respect. And you'll see even here with, with the new updated one, not the one that you've got, we've actually uh, printed in uh, Vian's insignia onto the actual thing. So it means we can actually, we can get a lot of uh, uh, customization on a putter, which can really make it unique to the actual individual user. So what Clive just described and what Vian is thinking about, like this gets beyond the, the customization options that are available to golfers today, just in terms of the weight distribution, the, the angles, um, the way that the putter feels. And there's also that aesthetic um, option as well to, to add designs, to add monograms and, and things to your club and make it really, really personalized. Yeah, so next up, Vian wants to commercialize this idea. He, he imagines an engineering career in the sporting goods industry, in the, the golf industry. But in order for this uh, tailor-made putter idea to, to advance, for it to be able to be used competitively, he has to ensure that every possible variation meets the requirements of the royal and ancient rules of golf, which is the governing body overseeing these things. So he has a ways to go, but stay tuned. All right, I think we got this. I think we do too. But you know, we always do this part sitting right here. I think we should try something different. This is a golf putter with a 3D printed head. It combines metal and polymer 3D prints for a club that can be fully customized to the user. The putter's made through additive manufacturing and can be tailored all kinds of ways. The geometry, the weight, the balance, which refers to the angle of this club face. This club was the idea of Jan van Esvigen, a golfer and student engineer at Nelson Mandela University. Um, he had help from Clive Hans, who is a lecturer there and also leads the Advanced Engineering Design Group. And they got assistance from Rapid 3D with the metal 3D printing on this club. The metal part is made of stainless steel, made through laser powder bed fusion, 3D printed in about a day. The polymer portions of this club head were 3D printed using fused filament fabrication out of a carbon fiber reinforced polymer. They are the weights on the club head and they can also be customized with the golfer's chosen design. To commercialize this putter, Vian needs to assure that it conforms to the rules of golf. But once he can do that, competitive golfers can get putters customized to their bodies, balance, and swings, and get them in a matter of days. That's it for this round of mini golf and this episode of The Cool Part Show. If you have a cool part you'd like to tell us about, maybe it'd be an episode of the show, email us, coolparts at additivemanufacturing.media. If you enjoyed this episode, if you like the show, leave us a like, leave us a comment, tell us what you enjoyed, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our new episodes. Thanks for watching. Thanks again to our sponsor, Carpenter Additive. In addition to supplying metal powders, the company also offers services, software, and hardware to help AM users manage their powder. One example is the Powder Life System, a combination of cloud-based tracking software with hardware designed to make powder handling easier. Two key components are the Powder Life Hopper and the automated docking station. Luke Boyer, manager of Powder Life Applications and Andrew Holiday, applications engineer, explained how the system works. So today, when a user of, of additive manufacturing is receiving powder, they oftentimes receive it in either five, 10, uh, 15, maybe a 20 kilo uh, bottle. Um, but they're receiving pallets of them, and you're receiving 10, 20, 50, hundreds of, of these bottles. The user you know, has to 
look and, and, and segregate and store them uh, appropriately so the bottles don't get mixed up. And it requires a lot of lifting and, and moving and labor. The components of Powder Life are all based around making powder management systems on the added manufacturing shop floor easier to use for the operator, cleaner, as well as more traceable. Three of those basic parts of Powder Life are our Powder Life hoppers, or our storage containers for powder. The second would be automated uh, docking systems that allow material to be pushed in and out of machines with uh, no human contact. And the third would be our Powder Life online software system that allows you to trace this powder as it goes through your shop floor. The hardware, the software together, just helps really streamline that and, uh, and, and improve the final user's experience uh, and let them concentrate on going from design to the part itself. It takes the headache of powder management out of the equation for them.